Hey everyone, welcome back to another build log of the DIYson. If you're new to this project, the DIYson is my attempt to design and build my own task light inspired by one of my favorites, the Dyson light cycle. In the last build log, we made a ton of progress on tidying up the electronics using a custom made PCB and managed to miniaturize the functional components of the lamp into the LED enclosure. In this build log, things are gonna be a bit different. I've been doing a lot of work on the lamp recently and I'm really eager to share my progress with you, but I've also been doing some reflecting on the overall project lately and today, I want to share those reflections with you, share a dilemma I've been facing, and introduce a solution to that dilemma that I think could be a ton of fun. Back when I started this project, I laid out a couple of project goals. I wanted to, one, replicate the motion system of the original Dyson, two, recreate Dyson's cooling system and pair it with a high-quality, high-power LED, three, I wanted to use off-the-shelf parts whenever it was practical to do so, four, when making custom parts, I want to try to make them 3D printable, and five, keep costs down so that people can afford to make it. While I think all of these goals still apply, as the project develops and becomes more complex, it's becoming apparent to me that there's actually another unstated goal that's missing from this list. That goal has to do with approachability, and it might go something like, make something that others can also make. At the same time, I'm having so much fun working on the DIYson that I want to keep working on it for a long time. As the project grows, I'm forced to learn new things like how to get PCBs made and what electronics is. I have a lot of room to improve in these areas, and if I do, that's going to directly translate to a substantially better final product, which I think many of you probably want to see. So you can probably imagine the dilemma this creates. As I push myself creatively and technically, it's almost always at the expense of project approachability. Every new skill or concept I learn adds a new barrier to entry and discourages folks from taking on the project themselves. But I think I have a fix. What if we took the DIYson and stripped out the one thing that accounts for like 90% of the complexity? You may have already guessed it, but in my opinion, that thing is without a doubt the electronics. While things like the industrial design and the motion system feel fairly isolated and manageable, the electronics is different. It's a source of pure entanglement. It infects almost every other component of the lamp with new constraints, interdependencies, cost, and skill barriers. If we could somehow just delete these electronics complications, what it would mean for the project is that basically anyone with a 3D printer could build their own DIYson in just a matter of hours. So that's what I did. This is the DIYson Express, the DIYson you can build in a weekend and iterate upon forever. It's kind of like the streamlined younger sibling of the no compromises DIYson that I've been working on up until this point, and that DIYson is the one I'll continue to develop from here on out. You can build the DIYson Express in a weekend because it capitalizes on a capability that likely wasn't very attractive or affordable when the Dyson light cycle or the CSIS lamps were invented, and that's high density rechargeable batteries. By switching from an external power source to an embedded one, we can move from an electronics package that looks like this to one that looks like this. This tiny device is like a cuboid bag of holding for all of our electronics woes. It has a high CRI LED, adjustable brightness, adjustable color temperature, and a noticeable lack of flicker. The area directly surrounding the light source is where the overall design departs from its older siblings, but it still draws a lot of inspiration. Matching radii around the corners, a super thin shell, and a strategically placed part line give it a less monolithic look. And I even included a cute little window for the battery indicator to shine through. The design feature that makes all this work is the mounting solution. This LED cube has an embedded magnet, so by embedding my own magnets in the enclosure, the cube can be popped in and out of place effortlessly when it's time to charge. This approach to power delivery is better than it sounds. Months ago, I actually dismissed this battery-based approach because lights like this only tend to get about an hour or so of battery life at full brightness. I learned that when I started using this battery-powered light panel to light my videos. That was before I started using it as my go-to personal task light, and what I learned is that because I can position this light source directly above my work area, I rarely, if ever, increase the brightness beyond 10% and at that rate, I can easily get eight hours or more of battery life. This little cube has a smaller battery capacity, so at 20% brightness, I get about four to five hours of life. More often than not, I finish using it before the battery is even close to being fully drained, and I just swap the module so that I have two fully charged light sources the next time I need them. You can also bring over a USB-C cable for a quick top up. Four to five hours of uptime not enough for you? Need more light in your workspace? No problem. Just find another light that works for you and design an enclosure for it. I made this one for a wand style light that has an impressive 2000 milliamp hour battery and a larger, more diffused light source. 
I've tested a handful of these battery powered lights and there are some really cool options out there. Take this wand style light from Newer. Despite only a slightly larger footprint, its battery packs an additional 500 milliamp hours of juice and has a noticeably higher quality LED chip with a CRI of 97. I personally find it a little too bulky, but you could easily design your own adapter for this and would make a super high quality option. But why stop there? This behemoth has five times the battery capacity of our little cube, five watts of output power, and can be controlled with an app. And yeah, this level of silliness is kind of what I loved about this streamlined approach. Every one of these options has benefits and compromises, and it just comes down to finding the one you like and making your own enclosure. Feeling indecisive? Are you a Sith Lord? Stick a light on both ends for a Darth Maul look. Everyone's DIY Sin Express contains choices and compromises that make it a deeply personal object. I even made a little template in Fusion 360 where you can enter the dimensions of your favorite light and start customizing. If you do go out and design your own, here are a couple tips I learned while making mine. First, even though the magnet that's embedded in my light cube is circular, it doesn't necessarily follow that a matching circular magnet is the best choice for my enclosure. Circular magnets like this tend to be very bulky. Beyond that, their mounting position tends to be fixed and inflexible because they must align exactly with the embedded magnet. I found that I was much better off using some smaller but stronger rectangular magnets where I had a lot more control over their placement and it allowed me to do things like expose the USB-C port on this cube. Second, the best thing you can do to make your enclosure cohesive with the rest of the lamp is to minimize its size as much as possible. And I found that that mainly came down to the thickness of the walls directly surrounding the light. Shaving down millimeters here really adds up quickly. The main difference between my first prototype and my final prototype, aside from the color, is just really a few millimeters of wall thickness on all sides. It really adds up, so push that as far as you can without sacrificing rigidity. Personally, my favorite light so far is this Ulanzi cube that I've been showing. The minimal battery life is more than made up for by the perfectly placed magnet, the placement of the controls, and their proximity to the USB-C port. Overall, this just manages to pack the most features in the smallest and best form factor. At 30 US dollars, it's also a fraction of the cost of other cube-shaped options I tried. The full parts list of the DIY Sin Express is short enough that it fits in the description of this video, and the only tools you need are a 3D printer and a couple of hex bit screwdrivers. Many of the 3D printed parts and nearly all of the off the shelf parts are currently shared with the full version of the DIY Sins. So if you wanted to upgrade your DIY Sin Express to a full on DIY Sin once the project is finished, you would have a serious head start on that. I've added all the files to the DIY Sin Express directory of the GitHub repository so you can modify any of the parts yourself. The total cost of the project will vary just based on which light source you choose. I can pretty much guarantee that it's going to cost quite a bit less than the Dyson light cycle, for example. And that's the DIY Sin Express. I'm hoping that there are some of you out there who are as excited as I was to take on this little project. I really did have a lot of fun working on it, so I hope you do too. For those of you who are more invested in the non-Express version of the DIY Sin, no need to worry, I'm still obsessing over that and I plan to keep pouring my time into it, developing the full version uh, for as long as it takes. In fact, splitting this project up like this allows me to push even harder than I could before. Yeah, overall, I've been pretty happy and content working on this project lately. I still aim to make the DIY sin as approachable and affordable as I possibly can, but it, it's just naturally going to be geared towards folks who are able to invest time, money, skill into a project like this. By the way, from here on out, I'm going to refer to the more complicated version, like the full DIY sin, as the DIY sin, and this I'll just call the DIY sin Express or the Express. The DIY Sin is on track to become much cooler in the coming weeks, so keep an eye out for the next build log. I've already made a lot of progress on that video, so it shouldn't be too far off. In parallel, I'm also thinking about ways that I can make videos more frequently and take on some new projects and share them with you. Until then, thank you so much for your support, and I'll see you in the next one. See ya!